Okay, perfect. What time is it? Okay, we have about two minutes. Uh, it seems some some people are having issues connecting. I'm just gonna resend the link. I see our sister Medula has joined as well. Jackie, we saw you for a second <laughs> and you disappeared. <laughs> Hello. Hey, Medula, good Hi. morning. Good afternoon from Paris. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine, and you? Good, we have a strong Parisian uh, connection. <laughs> <today>. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. yeah. That's how we do it. <laughs> good, good, good morning, sister. How are you? Good? Good. Excellent. Very, Very good. excited about this webinar. Yes. Uh, sister Bosse, the, the lead um, uh, speaker, is here. I'm not sure if, if you know each other yet. Maybe she, she can. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to quickly send a, the, somehow the, the link doesn't seem to be working for some. Um, oh, really? So I've got a few more people joining. Oh, yes, indeed, indeed, indeed. I see Umi, Lucia, that's good. So it's, it's starting. Okay. Oh, I love it. Someone I, I invited joined us. <laughs> yes. I don't see the link. Okay. Technology. Okay. It's ten. Should we give it another two minutes and then we can yeah. start? Okay. Yeah, I see people coming. I see your sister. Lucia is on also, Natalie is on, Ornella, Jessica. Anyone has any, any Zoom tiredness? Have you been a lot on Zoom lately? <laughs> So this is connected. I was thinking about putting some music on, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, let's play Angelique Kidjo for the next uh, one minute while we wait. Can you hear? It's not too loud. Hi. Good morning. I see Malia and her mom also. <laughs> Very good. Everyone's training. I think we can perhaps start and then uh, uh, sisters who are joining can, can come online and is it good, Bosse? Yeah, yeah. All right, perfect. 
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Great. Thank you so much for, for taking this moment of your day uh, to join the first webinar of Zaha's Dream, Be You Powerfully. Uh, this is a first, so we're going and learning all together as we go on the, on this beautiful platform. Um, my name is Roland Diane Subordeau. I know many of you as, uh, as my sisters, and I'm really happy for those who are joining for the first time and, and perhaps who have not yet had the opportunity to discuss and engage, but I'm really happy and grateful that you're here today. And we have our sister Bose, who's uh, the lead presenter today. And Hi. Bose is in Nigeria, and she's a, she's a great sister. Uh, I met Bose uh, last year, actually, uh, to give you a bit of a background. I'm working at the UN as coordinator of an initiative called the African Women Leaders Network. And we're, you know, it's a platform bringing together women at different levels in Africa to, to build transformation and to build change. And I met Bose in, in Kenya in person uh, for an event we were organizing on intergenerational partnership. And she came to see me at the end of, a, of the meeting with a book which she had signed. I, I don't have the book, unfortunately the book is in my office, but I have the workbook. Um, so I'm going to show you a bit of, uh, of what the book is about. It's called Conscious Leadership. So our sister came to me and she gave me a copy of the book signed and uh, I, I went back home to, to New York and I flew and I read the book in, a, in the plane and I was really touched by, by, the, um, by the intensity and, and the vision that our sister had put in the book in terms of how do we find ourselves and how do we tap into our purpose and our vision uh, to be able to, to not only have a career, but a fulfilling career and a career in which we can grow on so many different levels. And I thought it would be good for uh, our sister Bose to, to be one of the first, not only not one of the first, but the first presenter of, of Zara's dream, Be You Powerfully. So what is Zara's dream? Uh, and uh, I see actually uh, the person for which Zara was, uh, was uh, uh, inspired. <clears throat> Zaha is just connected. She's a young woman from Mali. So when I, I mentioned I work at the UN and Zaha was interning with us at the permanent mission of the African Union to the UN, she's a young woman uh, and she was interning with us and we were working together. And at the end of her internship, before she went back to Mali, I offered my first office suit to Zaha as a, as a present for her career. and. And you know, starting you know, giving a hand, and how do we come in solidarity with each other? I think that's really the vision of of Zaha's dream. You know, being able to uh, come together and exchange, and it's very difficult as young women, you know, wherever we are, to be able to uh, build a career, and and how do we find the right tools, and who do we speak to about some of the challenges we may have? You know, it's um, it's a long journey. It's not an easy one, but we can make it easier by coming together. So Zara is really the, the essence of why I wanted to start that. Uh, because for me, starting was very difficult. It's still a journey, I'm still growing, and I'm growing thanks to sisters like Bose, who wrote an amazing book, and I wish uh, for her to share some of the tools with you as well today. Uh, but we can you know, be in solidarity and be powerfully ourselves in a world that Tends to, to remind us that we should be different uh, no matter where we come from or what our background is. So it's really looking at how do we tap into our inner strength, into our inner power, into our inner voice. Uh, I think I tweeted something about this this morning. It's about not uh, finding yourself on the way, but knowing that you have all the gift and everything that you need already within you and just making sure that you go deep inside and understand who you are and what your power base is and what your voice is to be able to, to build the path that is yours. You know, we all have our individual journeys, but we can still come together and make sure that those journeys are uh, rewarding and um, you know, powerful uh, together. So that's what this is about. And I'm hoping that through this platform, we'll be able to learn from each other, we'll be able to uh, grow together. And also one of the pillar of Zaha's dream is really empowering each other through uh, access to professional opportunities. And I mentioned the power of 
so through clothes also. Uh, but before we go to that, uh, we are looking to host actually the first Zaha Dream um, masterclass this summer. Uh, we all know, unfortunately, coronavirus has taken a toll on our lives. Uh, it's a moment to reset, uh, but thank God we can use modern technology to, to still come together. So I'm going to leave the floor to Bosse, who is going to share a bit on what building a conscious, a fulfilling, and a rewarding career means. Thank you. Thank you very much, Verlaine. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are joining from. Allow me to share my screen um, because I do have a presentation. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen, awesome. So first of all, let me say thank you so much uh, to Verlaine for the Harris Dream. Um, thank you for inspiring a platform that we can share, grow, and learn together. I think that that is always more than welcome um, in this life that we we are living. Um, it's also it's always good to find people that we can connect with, that we can share, and that we can learn with. So thank you very much, Verlaine, and for the opportunity uh, to be able to share like this. I really appreciate it. So let's get right into it. And um, let me start by saying this is going to be very interactive. Um, even though we're using modern technology and we're not in the same room, I want you to be um, as involved in the process. So we're going to have a few polls and I want to encourage you to please participate. It's anonymous. Um, so conscious career. Um, a lot of people wonder what is this whole thing about. Um, so the first thing I like to talk about is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So put in the chat box if you've heard or raise your hand just to indicate if you've heard about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, just let me know. Have you heard about it? Uh, do you know about it? Yes, I see people raising their hands saying, yes, awesome, 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 awesome. So I'm glad that you've heard about it. Um, and, you know, it's interesting um, that Maslow left us with this gift um, because it really does speak, to, speak a lot to, to life and humanity. So at the base of the pyramid, we have our physiological needs, as we see on the screen, talked about basic things like air and water and food, shelter, sleep, clothing. So very basic needs, right? And then if you move up the pyramid a little bit, you start to see things like personal security, healthcare, property. So you're not talking of things that you will be talking about when you have kind of looked through your physiological needs. And then it kind of goes up the pyramid. So love and belonging, intimacy, friendship, connection, kind of what we're doing here, right? Um, and then you, go, you get to the level where it's esteem, respect, status, recognition. You're looking for freedom, right? And then ultimately, he says self-actualization, which is the desire to become the most that you can be, the best version of yourself, right? Um, and actually, Anthony Robbins, who's like a world-renowned author and coach, actually says that there is a higher level, which is contribution, right? Um, and people like Bill Gates and probably everyone in the giving pledge probably fit into that category where you've now reached a point of self-actualization and all you want to do is contribute and give back, right? So um, Anthony Robbins argues that there is actually a higher level there. Now, why is this important? We will soon find out. But before we find out, let us take our first poll, right? Who's ready for a poll? So our first poll is going to be awesome. Thank you, Julie. So our first poll is going to be a very simple question. What level of this pyramid are you at the moment? So please go ahead and answer the question. It's anonymous, like I said. Um, feel free to answer what level of this pyramid are you at the moment? Awesome, I can see our answers coming in. Great, almost there. A few more seconds. So are you at the point where self-actualization, everything, you know, esteem, love and belonging, 
physiological needs, which one are you? It's almost there. I think we've got one more person in and we're going to end the poll so we can have a look at our results. Okay, so 10 more seconds to go. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Awesome. So let's take a look at our results. Great. So can everybody see our results? Yeah? Berlin, do you see it? Awesome. Okay, great. So um, it's exciting to see that half of us actually have reached a point of self-actualization. And that's amazing, right? Um, and then obviously 38% of us are at the level where um, we have esteem, recognition, and all of that. Love and belonging has 13%, 6% safety needs. So, you know, we're at the point where we've gone past physiological, but then we have safety needs. And then obviously physiological needs. Fabulous. Thank you so much, everyone, um, for sharing and for participating in the polls. So why is this important, right? As we've seen, we are all here socialized differently from across the world, actually, which is why this is really amazing. Um, Berlin has brought all of us from across the world, different parts, and we are here socialized differently from different backgrounds, and we are different points of this pyramid. This is important because oftentimes man as an individual is a part of a family and oftentimes a part of society. And it is who you are that you carry with you to whatever it is that you're doing. And we will talk about career, but how many of us know that honestly, a career is just a vehicle, like literally it is a vehicle. It is just a channel right? It is not a destination of sorts. It's just how you express who you really are, as Berlin was saying. It is how you express if you've studied something, if you know about something, if you can do something. A career is really just a channel, right? But what determines what we are giving off and what we are demanding is based on where we are at this pyramid, and that's why it's very interesting. So I'll give you an example. If I'm, just, if I'm a student and I've just graduated, um, oftentimes I'm just looking to earn money, right? And so the first thing I'm thinking about is I want to get a job because I want to be able to pay my own bills. I want to be able to provide my own food. I want to move out of my parents' house or something like that, right? So it's basic physiological needs that we're thinking about when we just come out of school, right? And based off of that, oftentimes a lot of young people might not be thinking about, oh, what's my contribution? Would this role give me recognition of status, right? That's not what you're thinking about. You're just thinking about a job that will reward you for your time and contribute and, and you know, literally give you, so it's a transactional relationship almost, right? Um, and not necessarily one that you're thinking about self-actualization. So that's the importance of this, but moving on. So the next thing that we want to look at is something that people talk about a lot, why, right? So what is your why? Um, let me see, is this obstructing? Okay, awesome. So what is your why? And, you know, we have different words, passion, self-awareness, temperament. These are things that oftentimes people sometimes say is cliche. But I have to be honest with you, these are not things that are cliche. Your why is so important, right? Passion is a word that some of us think have been overused, but it's a very important word. Oprah says that passion is like breathing, right? Meaning that passion is who you are. It is what you do, regardless of whether you're paying attention or not. Your passion is always sort of emitting itself like perfume, right? And that's the thing about passion. Why is why your why is so important? Why is it important? It is important because as we've seen, once you've established where you are in that pyramid, then your why is really what is driving you, okay? So your why is what makes a difference between what you're going to be able to do for money or otherwise. And we'll talk uh, shortly about values. 
actually this is the part where we talk about values. So your passion and your values are very connected and your values is also connected to your value. So the value that you add and the value that you bring, right? So if you're someone who has a passion to change the world, for example, you would have values like compassion, right? Like love, like honesty, because you know that when you see someone who's maybe, uh, you know, in a less privileged position, you want to give of yourself, right? So your why is closely linked to your value and to the value that you add and the value that you bring. And like I said, all of this still determines or depends on where you are on that pyramid. Because if you have needs yourself, let's be honest, you wouldn't be able to give or there will be a limit to which you're able to give of somebody else. So that is why this is really important. So we're going to do another poll um, before we move on. So we're going to, so let's talk a little bit about how to create and capture value before we move on to that. Now, um, I'd, so Verlin has shared about my book and I will talk about what a conscious career is. But learning to create and capture value, as I said, is linked to your values. But oftentimes I feel like people who want to live a life of impact always feel like they need to do that at the expense of their own needs. And what I'm proposing is that you don't have to do that, okay? You can live a life that personally fulfills you, financially rewards you, but also creates value, which is impact for many people. So who's ready for another poll? Yes, 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 awesome, great. So for this next poll, we want to find out which category you are. So we started talking about some of the things. So are you in the category where you've got a great job, it's giving you a lot of money, but it doesn't really give you personal fulfillment, right? Or are you the person who is doing passion work? So you believe that you have passion, you know, you're doing passion work um, and you're living a life of purpose, but the money is just there, right? Or are you somewhere in between? Which one are you? So, mm -hmm. awesome. I see that our answers are already coming in. So, which one are you? Are you the one who has a great job, there's money in the bank, but you lack fulfillment, right? Or are you the one who is very passionate, right? Everybody knows, oh, you know, uh, Jessica is very, very passionate. She loves to help people and all of that, you know, but the money, <laughs> the money is not great, right? Um, or are you somewhere in between? Okay, so we're ending our poll because everyone has actually completed the poll. Awesome. So we see the results. 18% um, of us fall in the category where we have a great job, we've got good money, but we lack fulfillment right? And then not surprisingly, a majority of us are somewhere in between, right? Or actually within the part where we're doing passion work, the money is just okay, but we're living a life of purpose. And the rest of us are somewhere in between. So what this does, if we look at the results, it would actually mirror if we were to also take maybe an age you know, if we did like an age poll, because the truth is the longer you live and you even stumble your way through life, you start to realize what you like, what you do not like, what you feel good about, what you don't feel good about. And so if this was your first job, like I said, all you're looking for is at the end of the month, let me get paid. But as you begin to grow in life, you start to say, what type of work is this? Does it matter? You know, is it adding value? Do people benefit out of the work that I do? And I think that this poll is an expression of that, where a lot of us are doing passion work, right? So we've gotten to the level where we're able to say, I want to be able to do work that makes a difference, right? Um, but the money is just okay. And so 
what I'm trying to say when I talk about creating and capturing value is that honestly, we need to learn how to create and capture value. Today, as long as you're on the earth, regardless of where you are in the world, the currency for exchange of value is money, regardless of the currency, dollars, francs, whatever it is, naira, right? So what value are you bringing? What value are you adding? Now, as we've seen, a lot of us want to create impact in our world, and I argue that that should be all of us, actually. All of us should be creating impact. But you can also create value because it's about problem solving. You have been put on earth to solve problems, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're working in a nonprofit. And that's another very interesting argument. Some people feel it's only people in nonprofits who are making a difference. Um, but I like to use an accountant, which is what a lot of us consider a boring job, right? You can be an accountant and want to build an impactful career. And you say, you know what? Every small business I know must have their books right. Because I know that if they have their books right, it increases their chances to be able to access finance and therefore increases their chances to be able to sustain that business and for that business to be able to outlive them. Because as we know, the statistics show that a lot of businesses don't survive five years and beyond. And oftentimes, one of the critical challenges of that is uh, their books. A lot of entrepreneurs just don't keep their books. So you just need to be someone who's looking for a problem to solve. Um, OK, so I'm going to talk a little bit about what I call points of intentionality. And as I talk about this, I want you to reflect on your own life and start to think, what were some of my points of intentionality? Okay. Um, for Elaine, if you just let me know how many minutes I have left so that I, you know, try to, to wrap up faster or, or um, if I'm, I'm okay. Okay. Awesome. Right, so we're talking about points of intentionality. And like I said, please, I want you to reflect on your own points of intentionality as we go ahead. My first point of intentionality, and this is me as Bosse, was in my junior secondary school when I did really well in my exams. And um, the school insisted that I go to a science class, right? So this is a science-based class. And I said, no, I was 13 years old. But I knew, based on my limited understanding at the time, that I was already singing and dancing, and I loved humans. Like, I loved to play. I was the child who they would always say, come back inside the house, right? So I just thought to myself, look, I don't want to be doing the sciences, because my understanding of the sciences was it was very insulated. You know, you'd probably be in a lab and all of that, you know? And I thought, you know, I want to do something that allows me to relate with humans. Right? So I insisted on going to an art class. So that was my first point of intentionality, even as a 13 year old. The second point of intentionality for me was in my senior secondary school, where I had now gone through my arts class and the most prestigious course when you go through an arts class going into university is law, right? And they thought to me, a lot of people were saying, my parents and everybody were like, you know, you speak well, you make a really good lawyer. And I said, you know what, I want to make a difference and change the world. So this is something I started saying when I was 16 years old. And therefore, I said, the perception or the picture of somebody who does this to me is an ambassador. And so I insisted I wanted to study international relations, right? And unfortunately, the school I was going to didn't have international relations. So I, I ended up studying political science. But the, the, the point I make is, I didn't go with law because it was the most prestigious art course to do, having gone through art class. So second point of intentionality. The third point of intentionality for me was when I graduated school. And I obviously, you graduated now, you have opportunities to work. Um, and I insisted on working in the nonprofit sector, especially because somebody had told me about an organization called Action Aid International that had a vision of a world without poverty and a mission to eradicate the inequities and injustices that cause poverty. I hope I've already established to you that it's not about private sector or public sector. That's not the point. The point is about the job 
the vehicle that allows you to do what you want to do because your job is your vehicle. But in my case, it was nonprofit. Going on to the next point of intentionality for me was my entire career journey. Now, if you know anything about me, you know that my aspiration is to be president of Nigeria. And one of the things that I've always, yes, and one of the things that I think government gets criticized for a lot is that they don't know how to do, how private sector does it, right? Or they just don't understand. So bottom line, public service is a place where you're managing multiple stakeholders. And so for me, in my career journey, it was important for me to work across sectors. Now, this is my journey but being intentional and being conscious, right? I said, if I want to end up in public service, I want to work in private sector, I want to work in nonprofit, because I want to be able to, when I'm in public sector, manage stakeholders, understand their perspective, and be able to bring everyone to the table so that we can move a nation forward. So this was another point of intentionality that in my 16 year career now, I have worked across the private sector, the public sector, and of course the nonprofit sector, mainly in international development. So if you find me, right, you will always find me where there's impact. The two commonalities about my entire life and my career is people and impact. Very, very clear. So you will find me doing different things, women in politics, you know, young people, empowerment, all sorts of things. But in, at the core of that is that people are being empowered, right? And I'm making impact. And then my final point of intentionality is around my career portfolio. So this is so important because everything that interests you, so whether, trust me, I watch Netflix, but I'm watching everything that has a president in it. That's me. You find me, every movie that has a president, or a prime minister, or the White House, or something, right? I've watched it all. Because that's my interest. That's, that's what I, you know, that's what pulls me. So it's a pull. It's my passion. I'm inspired by things like that. I, I read autobiographies because I'm inter interested in people's stories. I'm interested in their lives and what makes them become who they are, especially if um, I, I'm interested in, in what they've, they've contributed to the world. So what is a conscious career? So I define a conscious career as a career that personally fulfills you. This is so important, right? Because I know that we know, and I, unfortunately we don't have a poll for this, but I'm almost sure that if we had a poll for how many of us know people who, like we did in our second poll, are doing very well, they've got money, but they're not fulfilled. Right, And the way we see it in our world today, they get older and they want to start a foundation because they just feel like, I want to give back, right? Um, we know those people. But then we also know people who, from the outside looking in, we feel like, wow, she's so passionate. She's, so, she's doing work that's impacting people. But unfortunately, she's broke. And how many of us know that broke cannot help broke? I, I learned that the hard way, right? Because I was trying to give out my money, trying to help people. But you know, I, I was suffering, right? So broke cannot help broke. So there must be a sustainable way for creating impact. And that way is that you must learn how to create value in a way that it financially rewards you, it personally fulfills you, but most importantly, it's creating impact. And I feel like this time um, with COVID-19, where we've all had an opportunity to step back, actually makes us see that, look, there's just no point we are all moving and going on a rat race and going to meetings and conferences and these things if it's not adding value to people, right? So I argue that we should all be doing work that makes an impact. And in a lifetime, you can have different careers. As I said, a career is only a vehicle. It is literally like what we vehicle a car. It's literally a car taking you from point A to point B. And a good example I like to use is think about a footballer. So if a footballer started playing football at 17, how many of us know that at 30, you would have to retire maybe, right? But as a footballer at 30, 
you could then become the coach. So you have a passion for football. You have played a role as a footballer, which means that you're an employee of a football club, right? And then you can become a coach, which again, you're an employee, but it's a different vehicle, right? Where you're expressing your passion for football. Now, how many of you know that you can graduate to the level where you buy the club, right? So now you're an investor, again, in something that you're passionate about, which is football. Now, in the same lifetime, you can say, you know what? I, I don't like the way that FIFA, the, the Football Federation, does not um, encourage women you know, to be active in football. And you start to use your platform to advocate for uh, gender equity in football. Now you become an advocate as a career path, right? Using the same thing that you're passionate about. And so this is one thing you're passionate about, but you've expressed it in multiple ways, right? And that's the point that I'm making. In one lifetime, you can have different expressions based on what you're passionate about. So I've been talking a lot. Who's ready for our final poll? I need encouragement to launch this poll. So let me know if you're ready. Let me know, let me know. I need some encouragement. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome, great. So let's do it. So our final poll is a very simple question. Now that you know what a conscious career is, as I've defined it, tell us, are you building a conscious career? Yes, no, or you're not sure? Where are we? Let's see, let's see, let's see. Are we all building conscious careers here? Oh, we're not sure. Where are we? Almost in, everybody. Two more people. Remember, it's an anonymous um, poll. So feel free to send in your answers. Okay, so we're going to end the poll in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Awesome. So, fantastic, fantastic. So, Verlaine, you've got like a community of conscious career builders in the house, which is awesome, right? So 83% of us who are in the room today are building a conscious career, and that is amazing. It warms my heart so much because that is all of us multiplied, right? In ourselves, being deliberate, being intentional, about the impact that we're making. But guess what? We're not also letting go of ourselves, our mental health, right? What is important to us, our family, if that's what's important to you. Um, helping someone, if that's what's important to you, right? We're not sort of for, for, for going our personal fulfillment only for financial reward or for going financial reward only for personal fulfillment uh, and for going impact completely. So this is amazing. Thank you all for that. Great. So as I begin to wrap up, and um, Verlaine, I don't know if we'll have some time for questions, but please, if you have any questions, begin to put them in the chat box. Um, and I will just take a few minutes here to wrap up. So this is what I call a sweet spot. And remember that this journey is not about perfection. And that's why I really like today's theme about being powerfully you. I personally believe that one of the signs of greatness is not just humility, but it's vulnerability. And it's understanding that you're not perfect, but yeah, you're on a journey, right? Um, but for a conscious career, this is what I call a sweet spot. And from our last poll, it's good to see that a lot of us are tending towards the sweet spot. I have to be honest with you, I've come from different parts of it. So I started off 
being very conscious, being very intentional, but not being aware of financial, just not having financial knowledge, right? And so it's one thing to be making money. It's another thing to have financial knowledge such that you can sort of get to the point where you have financial freedom or you have financial reward in the measure that is good. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So I've been on my own journey. I started off from having a lot of personal fulfillment, right? Um, but getting to the point where I'm now starting a family and I'm thinking, okay, well, I don't have a lot of money to be able to do all the things that I really want to do. Um, and that's because for a long time I was saying, oh, I don't really care about money. I just want to impact the world. I just want to make a difference. And that's why I learned the hard way. And so that's why I'm inspiring people to say, no, that's important as well. Because like I said, broke cannot help broke, right? So I want to save the world. I want to do all these good things. But if my needs are not taken care of, then there's a limit to what I can do for the world, even though I have all these good intentions, right? And then most importantly, impact. What will be the point of life if somebody is not better off because I showed up, right? I mean, what would be the point? Um, and therefore, it is to live a life of impact, right? So, and this, it doesn't really matter what you're doing. Once you come to the consciousness, and which is why it's about consciousness, once you come to the consciousness about the importance of these things, then you start to be deliberate, right, in your workplace as to how you treat people, how you encourage people, how you inspire people. You start to be deliberate as to how you keep your money, how you manage your money, how you take care of your money, because you want to be in a position where you are uh, mentally, financially, uh, physiologically, you're well, you're balanced. Remember, going back to that pyramid, where you can ultimately contribute, right, to the larger society and to humanity. So this is my final slide to tell you and to encourage you, as our sister Verlaine has said with the theme today, that you are powerfully you. I always say be you, be free, be brilliant. My favorite quote of, of all time is by Marianne Williamson. Um, and it's the uh, our deepest fear, right? And there's a particular line that I love that says, your playing small does not serve the world. And I really, really agree with that. So we need to own our power, really, um, and know that the world needs our contribution. So I'm encouraging us to be you, be free, and be you, you, not me. Don't be me, and I won't be you. <laughs> so be you be free because there's something about freedom when you when you allow yourself to be um because we just don't know how powerful we are and that's the truth right but the moment we let ourselves be free to be to express and to become right so many things can happen and be brilliant brilliant meaning that's how you are that is how you were designed to be right um it says in that uh, poem that as we let our light shine, we give others permission, right, to also shine their light. So you can do anything. Thank you very much. And I'm going to stop sharing now. Thank you so much for our sister, Bose. Again, uh, I want to congratulate. I know our sisters are muted. <laughs> But I'm sure everyone is clapping at home and, and cheering on, on the wonderful, beautiful, powerful presentation you have shared with us. And that's exactly why I wanted you, my sister, to, to be able to share this light and this strength and this power with all of our, our sisters who are now sitting and, and listening to, to Zara's dream. So there are questions. Uh, perhaps if it's okay, we can go through some of the questions that uh, have been asked uh, throughout your presentation. Uh, one of the first question is how important is discipline when it comes to building a conscious career? If you could uh, share a bit on that. Yes. Thank so thank you for that question. I think it's a really good question. Um, so discipline is important. I think that that's the first thing to say. Um, there's no question about it. But I think that if you are a, I, I'm a repent 
how do I, how do I say it? I'm a repenting perfectionist, right? Because I realized that perfection doesn't help anyone, right? Um, but if you are a perfectionist, then discipline can be very detrimental because then it doesn't allow you to move forward, right? Oftentimes, we who are looking for perfection or who are who hold ourselves to very high standards, right? Um, you oftentimes sabotage yourself because you're always waiting for that perfect moment. You're always waiting for that perfect situation. And what you end up doing is procrastinating, right? And I'm also a repentant procrastinator. So I know exactly how that feels, right? And it doesn't do you any good. So discipline is important on the journey, but don't beat yourself up, right? Failure is not a destination. We fail forward, right? Because oftentimes people who are very disciplined and athletes are a very good example of that. Um, they have to be on a certain diet. They have to be on a certain routine because you're trying to achieve something. So the principle of that is the same. When you're, I'm trying to be president. So I've tried to make sure, and I've been saying that since I was 16. So I've tried to make sure that I don't have any, uh, cockroaches or in my cupboard if you know what i mean because then it will be used against me during my campaign so i've been actually very intentional about sort of my reputation i have to be honest with that so that is a form of discipline right um in based on what i'm trying to achieve so that is important but don't beat yourself up so discipline to the degree that it helps you move on the journey towards what you're trying to achieve Thank you so much, my sister. The, the next question, this question was from Gladys. The next question is from Jackie, who's asking, how would you advise encouraged recent graduates like myself to begin a change, uh, uh, to begin a change in key areas like peace, security, gender equality without being looked down upon by seniors? So how do we manage young and, and senior relationships as you start? Okay. So I think that for, for many young people, the first thing, and I think that the fact that you're here, uh, Jackie, is already an example that you have the right attitude, right? Um, it's about going out to look for, look, technology has changed our lives, and let's tell ourselves the truth. LinkedIn, I tell people, just going to LinkedIn and looking through people's profiles is like, sort of like an expo into or a shortcut into sort of the path that you can chart for yourself, right? If you're trying to get to the destination where they are, for example. So the point I make is use what you have to your advantage, write articles, right? Comment on, um, so, and I mean, we didn't have time to go into mentoring or networking, but I'm one of those people who I'm, I'm a little bit not a fan of today's way of networking which is very transactionary in nature so find somebody and start to do things for them so that they know that they can also do something for you when you are on this journey of being conscious you find i believe in something called fluid networking what is fluid networking fluid networking is on my journey i happen to be in new york maybe two years ago or three years ago now and i met berlin that is fluid networking because on your journey the people that you need will come your way, right? As far as you're on that journey. So it's the people that you need. You will attract them, they will be attracted to you. You will also be attracted to them, right? And therefore, you will get what you want. So to that young person, I will say, use what you have. And what you have now might be time, your phone, and data, right? And so how are you positioning yourself? Do you know those people that you want to work with, that you want to work like, or you want to build a career like? comment on there, you know, reach out, write articles, also build knowledge. I feel like with a lot of young people, if you're not confident in what you have to offer, then sometimes it comes across. So make sure that you're building yourself, you're developing yourself as you're looking for those opportunities. The opportunities will surely come. Thank you so much, my sister. The next question comes from Medula, who's asking, can we build a conscious career alone what is the value of a role model mentorship? Awesome. So um, actually, in my book, there's a chapter on people, structures, and processes, right? And I, I was already speaking to it when I said, um, you do need mentors, right? But again, 
your mentor doesn't have to be physical, right? Oprah is my mentor. She's mentored me for a long time, but she has no clue who I am, right? Um, but I'm inspired by her life. I've read stuff that she's written. I've watched her shows. I've watched, you know, what she's done, right? So mentors don't have to be physical. And I'm saying this because oftentimes we put barriers, right, to be able to move from point A to point B, and that's not necessary. The second thing I will say is volunteering. I have a whole chapter in my book dedicated to volunteering. And I feel like volunteering is life transforming, even though volunteering can be a full-time career because all you do is volunteer, but you get paid for it. And I know that the UN system has a whole volunteering system that is paid for. But the point I make is that volunteering can bring you close enough to somebody who you want to be mentored by, who you want to be supported by. But volunteering is a way to go into a place and say, you know what, I want to come in every Friday to do X and X because you know that you can add that value. Remember, it's about understanding your value. What does that do? It puts you at a level where you're not going as if you're begging. It, it puts you in a level where you understand that you're adding value. And therefore, it's not a, it's not a favor, right? But it's a mutually beneficial relationship. Thank you so much, my sister. We have, we have a lot of questions, so I'll try to go quick. Okay. But there's one comment. Go ahead. We've got a few minutes. <laughs> Okay, thank you, dear. We have um, a comment from uh, our sister Margaret, who's sharing that uh, on your journey to being powerfully you, it's important to get coaching, to be mentored, and that an important element is that failure is part of the journey to greatness, you know, mm -hmm. so appreciating failure and making sure that, you know, we're nice and, and in tune with, the, with ourselves. The next question is from Jessica. Uh, how do you manage disruptors, toxicity to your journey? This is uh, indeed, uh, this is a good question. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, thank you, Jessica, for that question. Um, to be honest, and I, I mean, this is one of those areas where um, I'm going to be very humble to say it's a waste of time. I don't know. I, I, I wish I could put it nicely. But, you know, when you're very focused, um, then you, you recognize distraction when you see it, that's all. So you recognize it for what it is. And take it from somebody who has been criticized a lot and been, you know, it's just what, that's part of life, right? But don't ignore the lessons, right? Um, I, I believe in God and I, I like to say that God puts people in your journey and in your path to shape you. So it's actually who you're becoming that's important. And God will put people that you need to sharpen that area. So if you are very short tempered, God will definitely put people who will get you on your nerves, right? Because where you're going, you need to be somebody who has self-control. It's just what it is. Greatness takes a lot, right? So that's the way I see it. So when I've encountered people who are, you know, who make me feel bad and all of that stuff, I work, I'm very... I, I look inward, right? So it's what am I supposed to learn? How can I be better? And then I sort of give love to be honest. And I'm telling you a real story. I'm, I'm starting a YouTube channel soon. And this is all of what is inspiring that YouTube channel because I feel like a lot of people are stuck. But you know, when, you, when, you, when you're strong, you need to be strong. And strength comes from showing somebody love who has shown you hatred, for example. It's very, very powerful right? Because you understand that you are capable and that you can do it. So that's what I'll say. Beautiful. The next question is from my sister Zaytuna, who's asking, how can I overcome fear to build my confidence? Hmm. So thank you so much for asking that. Um, I think I've already started to speak to it. Fear is, fear is nothing. And I'm not trivializing fear. It is real, but my point is you push through it. There's no, I mean, I, I feel like the best way to say it is be fake it till you make it, but there are a lot of us faking it till we make it. That's the truth. What you don't realize is that everybody you look up to is faking it, if you know what I mean. In one way, shape or form, we don't have it all together. So it's false to think that that person you're looking up to has it all figured out. They don't right? So they stumbled their way. Yes, they stumbled their way there. So the point I make is, 
it's okay to be afraid. So I'm part of Toastmasters. And for anybody who is, they say it's okay to feel butterflies in your tummy, but let the butterflies fly out information, right? Especially when you're going to speak. And that's all that's important. So push through that because guess what? You need to do something to know that you can do it to then build the confidence. So you could, you might as well. Right. So it's how um, I grew up with my friend's mom who was British and she used to say, um, Bosse, don't be afraid to ask questions. If you ask once and you know it, you know it forever. Right. As opposed to not knowing and not asking and pretending like, oh, my gosh, you know. Um, so, yeah, push through the fear is what I'd say, but not trivializing the fear. But fear is nothing. You're more powerful than fear. Thank you, my sister. The next question is from Situ. She's asking, how much risk should you allow yourself to take while pursuing a conscious career? So risk is a very interesting word. Um, but I think this is what you mean. Um, so for example, I, I've been working 16 years and the longest I've stayed <laughs> at any job is actually my current job, um, and which is three years and six months now or seven months, I'm not sure. But ultimately maybe I would have stayed here for four years um, when I'm done. Um, and I know that one of the major challenges especially if you think about 16 years ago, because now I think moving jobs is more, um, it's more common. But I remember when I was changing jobs, people kind of frowned at it. They were like, you know, why are you, you know, it's like you're hopping around, right? That, that's what they say. But for me, one thing that was always very clear, I went into a company understanding why I was going into that company right so i went there with a very clear understanding as to this is why i'm here and the day that you know that was done i was going to move on and the reason why most people don't move on is because you're afraid you might not get a job or you might not. but people who know me and this is the point i'm making when you start to build a conscious career you're playing to your strength so it looks like magic from the outside looking in because a lot of people used to say I, you've changed jobs again. And they would say it in a way like you even found a job, right? But the truth is when you're playing to your strengths, then you will most likely find something because you are only operating in your own little world. If you know what I mean, you're not competing with anybody, right? So risk to the degree that it is leading you to where you're going is fine, but not risk as the world defines it, where it's just, oh, take a big risk. You know what I mean? So I'll give you a very good example of this. My sister, my older sister loves to work in small companies and her, this is how she says it. She says, I love to be a big part of a small thing instead of a small part of the big thing, right? So this is her own description. So instead of working for a large organization, she wants to be part of a small organization and then she's like maybe CEO or whatever, right? Meanwhile, I've worked in a lot of organizations where I'm just a part of a larger team. So you can take those kind of calculated risks within that context, but not risk as the world knows it, where you feel like, oh, they said entrepreneurship is better than employment. So like I said, these are all vehicles. You can be an employee, you can be an entrepreneur, you can be a volunteer all at the same time. I hope that helps. Thank you so much, Bosse. We don't have any further questions. Awesome. Uh, but there is a comment from Sifo. Sifo is based in Addis. She's our sister from Addis. And uh, it's about networking, you know, and she shares also the importance for uh, young women, particularly to build networking uh, horizontally, you know, with other sisters, you know, not only looking at senior people more advanced and making sure that, you know, you connect also with people around you. Uh, and there's also our sister Nasrin from Nigeria who shared that she is leading an organization called Surge Africa and she's calling on young women and any woman on this platform to, to, to come forward. And if you want to share articles and write uh, that she will be able to provide you with a platform. So this awesome. is also what this is about, you know, coming together yeah. and, and offering each other's platform. So if anyone would like to, to get in touch with Nesrin, don't hesitate to, to send your, your details and, and we'll connect you. Thank you. I think that ah, there's one more question, which is the most important one, I think, when it comes to uh, this uh, specific webinar, 
where can we get the book? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so uh, is it okay if I put the website in the yes, chat box? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So it's here. If I may, if I may, my dear, maybe you want to share a bit about the workbook as okay. well. The link will be available. Yes. Possibly. Yes. Um, so if you, so thank you again, Berlin, and thank you everyone for making this interactive and for your questions. Um, so if you go to consciouscareer.com.ng, um, I actually have a free workbook on there at the moment. Um, I definitely thought that you know with the lockdown and the shutdown across the world, a lot of people are definitely going to be in reflection mode. Um, and so my, I've got a book and I've got a full workbook that's like 40 plus pages, but I then sort of um, reduced that to about 15 pages um, to be able to just get people through this thinking process that I knew that a lot of people would be in. So please feel free to go on um, Conscious Career website and download the free workbook in the month of april we also had like a free strengths profile um available to everyone but that has now closed um but if you don't know what the strengths profile assessment is it's basically like one of those career type assessments that really help you to understand what are your strengths realized and unrealized um, and how can that help you to sort of forge ahead in your career? So do check out that. The link will still be in the workbook as well. Um, but please feel free to download the workbook and use it. Um, and then obviously, if you're um, interested in the book, you would also see links to where to purchase the book on the website as well. If I may share, we're almost at the end of this webinar. It's always difficult to say goodbye when we're having fun, isn't it? <laughs> Do you still want to share the the hard screen or the? Yes, website? please, if you wish, yes. if you yes. wish, yes. yes. Um, oh, but I think really, um, uh, just to to give one last uh, comment before our sister comes back, Bosse, and and gives the the farewell to this to this webinar, but just uh, just to the webinar. Uh, don't hesitate to, to go back on, on the website of Zaha's Dream as well to look at uh, the various pillars that we're trying to engage. This is also your platform. Uh, we're hoping to host this summer, hopefully coronavirus, we don't know what's happening, but the plan is to host this, this summer a masterclass uh, on, on, you know, on the various actions and really building on, on being ourselves powerfully and, and feeding into our strength, into our voices. and and making sure that you know we we contribute to the world in a in a positive and transformative way, as my sister Bosse has uh, has mentioned, uh, it's so important for me personally to uh, to to have shared that um, that gift, if I may say, uh, because it was also for me a very very difficult and it is still a difficult journey of growth. Um, you know, from my starting point of where I came from to being in a space where I can give back and and help also other sisters who might be you know looking for themselves or who are in a beautiful position of self-discovery like our sister Bosse to be able to to share with us so my hope is that we can all you know feed on each other's strength and and build each other up and always be in the spirit of you know of growth and and finding our true um our true defining our true versions, you know, of who we are and, 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 and you know, and, and, you know, and just be, you know, and just be in this world that oftentimes, unfortunately, as women, and even more so as women of color, uh, defines us or, you know, tries to attribute elements that might not be ours. So how do we make sure that we stand uh, powerfully into the beings that we are? So this is what this is about. Uh, I'm gonna let her sister give the last word. Uh, I, I'd like to thank everyone also for, for coming in. And please don't hesitate if you would like to be in touch with her sister Bose and hijack and spam her her WhatsApp. <laughs> I know she won't. She yes, won't be. Yes. <laughs> I, hope she, I hope she won't say no. But don't hesitate no, to please. reach out and give your contact, and we'll make sure that you can see guidance and you know explore further on conscious leadership with Bose. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Verlaine, and thank you everyone for spending your afternoon, morning, depending on where you are with us. Um, like Verlaine, I just hope that um, this was, you know, useful just to inspire you, um, to encourage you. Uh, we're on a we're on a journey, and it's a it's a continuous one. 
but we want to be able to end up in a place where um, we have personal fulfillment, financial reward, and we can say that we impacted our world. Thank you all very much. And thank yeah, you, Verlaine. Thank you very so much. Before you leave, sorry, sisters, I, if I may, because this is the first webinar and Zaha, who inspired actually me building mm -hmm. this platform is online. I don't know, Zaha, if, if you can just say a few words. If I see you're muted, if you can perhaps no, I can, say... I've unmuted her. All right. Okay, she's here. Okay, my dear, please go ahead. Hi, everyone. I'm so sorry my internet sucks, but I hope everyone is fine. Thank you so much for such an inspiring uh, webinar. It was, it was great listening to you, honestly. And I'll definitely look for your LinkedIn after this webinar. Uh, like Valen said, I'm Zara, I'm from Mali. I interned at the UN in 2017 and I was an international student in the US. So I don't know if some of you have been international student in the US, but it was definitely a struggle. But um, after knowing people like Berlin's, my life definitely changed. After my internship, she offered me her first um, suit. And I personally wore that first suit to, for the biggest event of my first job. So it was definitely something big for me. And I would like to thank Berlin. And I'm hoping that we can host uh, the launching this summer. I really hope that the coronavirus will go away and then we can all meet in person. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. All right, I think this is the end of the webinar. Thank you so much, everyone. Bessie, would you have one last word? No, thank you, everyone. Go all forth right. and be you. Thank <laughs> you so have a good one, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.